welcome, welcome. This is our sew along. We're gonna do it a little differently this year because I want you to see and understand that we've done all of the parts. We're just gonna change them up as to how we put them together so that it works the very best and simplest for you. So keep in mind what we wanna to do today is winter coats. It was suggested to me a while ago. I've been having it in my head and I thought winter coats, winter coats, what's so different about winter coats? And really it's the fabric and that's all it is, the fabric and the sizing, fabric and sizing. So we're gonna go over both of those things here for a minute. We've got some beautiful fabrics in. I, I, I didn't plan it. I couldn't have planned it better if I did. We have some stunning fabrics. They're all up online. This for instance is a wool and silk at $19.99. These are incredible prices, incredible fabrics. But what I did is I made half for you and then I've left the other half undone so you can see the construction. But if you go back on in January 2014, we had a two-part series, and this was on pattern 1950 called Max's Jacket, and that's what we're going to use, and I'll kind of give you the background here for hows and whys. So first off, when my mother was alive, I had a coat, it was my favorite coat, that I just threw on all the time, and in the winter it was just easy, I just loved it. And one day she said to me, I said to her, I said, you know, we need to get your coat, and she said, I love your coat. And I said, well, that's my coat. <laughs> we need to get you a coat. She said, but I really like yours. So I gave her my coat. <laughs> and she wore and wore that coat. She wore it to death. It was hard to get it off of her, to get it clean and get it back on her, especially as she got older. She just loved the coat. Well, you know, look, we all have lost someone. I've not touched that coat since she passed away. Like literally, it's I can still, you know, she's in that coat. So... I actually went back to that coat to figure out, I don't want to wear it, I want to keep it as her coat, but I did want to duplicate it, and that was the basis of what I've done here today. So I want to walk you through what I did so that you can do the same thing. On our website, if you go over to the features page and click on features, there's a chart that says find your measurements, know your measurements, something like that. If you print that out, you, and you can just pull it up and print it out. And what it is, is it's a, a chart to help you aware, to help you become aware of styling and what you like and what you want. You'll need to do this for this project because coats are no different than jackets. They're just sized larger generally, but how much larger their size, that's what you're gonna have to understand about yourself. I'm gonna walk you through what I did. So, um, I started with 1950 and I started, I know the size I normally make. I measured that coat, the coat I like, and I measured the circumference at the bust. I measured the width of the sleeves. I measured the width of the shoulders. I'm sorry, from, from here across to here. And you can just literally take a, a, take a yardstick and measure from here to here because it goes right through center front. Then I measured the circumference of the sleeves. I just measured circumferences because that's all that really changes between a jacket and a coat, a winter coat, is a circumference because of what it's going to be layered over. But what it's going to be layered over is completely up to you. In the North, you all take your coats very seriously and they have very serious work to do, so I completely understand it. But in the South, it's really just getting from point A to point B and you know, it's just short term and styling is more important to us. So just cons that's why this is really all about you. Don't consider anyone but you, but have a base as to what, you're, what you normally wear and what you're going to, and that's what I did. So I went up in size. Don't go up partially here and partially there. Go completely up, and, and so I did. I went up in size, and I just completely made and used that size. That's it, it was that simple. I selected my fabric just based on what I liked. That coat that I loved was a black. This is kind of a black and blue fabric. I absolutely love it, love it, love it. But I did want to change the front. And, and what, I, what I noticed, what I loved about the coat was the collar. And it ties in actually today because I'm gonna take you onto what Meghan Markle is wearing, that off-white coat when she got engaged or announced the engagement to Prince Henry. I'm gonna kinda, of, they all tie in. It's the same base pattern. So I kind of want you to see that. All right, so with this, what I want, what I, what I love about the coat, what I noticed what I love about the coat, is it's a shawl collar in the back, but it's a very narrow shawl collar. It actually in the back does not flip over. And then what it does, as you can see, is it gradually just comes to this width. 
and then it goes into a double breasted. So double breasted, here's my original front and that's all I'm changing is the front. I'm not changing the other pieces or anything. Double breasted, I add four inches to center front. So I did that and I did it all the way down. I did add 10 inches because the length of the coat where I wanted it was right above my knees. So I figured that how long it was and added that length to it. And I added the same length to all the pieces all the way across. That's the easy, easy thing to do. All right, so noticed I added four inches and this point doesn't change. So all it was a matter of was adding this amount right here to create the look of the lapel. And what you can do is you can just close it up, figure out where it starts to go in. It's just design. I don't think there's anything that's right or wrong about design. It's just what you like. And you can actually lay it down and trace the shaping of it. And so it's very simple to do. So I just want you to see that's the only addition. That makes it the double breasted, which is what I wanted. And really, I didn't even want it double breasted so much as for the style of double breasting. I just noticed that when I have the coat on, I love feeling like I'm wrapped up in it. I just really love that feeling. And so I don't want it to just come to the front. It just feels, for me, in a coat, it feels just a little bit small. And if I have a coat that only comes to the front, I have a tendency to wear it open. This one I didn't want to. I wanted to wear it closed. I wanted to have that extension. So notice it's I wanted, I wanted. It's, it's all about me. <laughs> the coat is all about me. So we can do all of these options with it. All right, so that's the simple enough changes. If we go into this coat that Meghan Markle had on, this is where all the fun was added. It was still double breasted, but this portion changes now because it did fold over in the back. And it's going to come out wider here and then come down. And the wider it comes, the more elaborate that collar becomes. That's just a base. I don't, it's not a pattern making class here, but I did just want you to see how easy it is to go from one look to another look because all of this rest is all the same. The sleeves, everything, the facings, everything's still the same. So because this became the front, it also became the front facing. And so you cut two for the front and two for the facing. All right, that's the pattern work. Very simple to do. I did decide that I wanted pockets, so I approximately put a pocket placement. But again, it's just approximate. Once you put it on, you can actually decide where you want that pocket to go. And for a coat, generally, you don't do a welt. You'll do a... Um, I mean a dual welt, you know, the, the two fine welts, those are really for a jacket, not a coat, because a, a coat is just, you're really more expected to use the pockets. So you'll do the single welt with the wide flap. And this we have done directions for it. If nothing else, you'll have um, pieces for it in 4200 because we did a breast pocket, same thing. You'll just change that up a little bit. And so I put a pocket on, I love that. And again, where you wanna put it is up to you. I have a tendency to put them a little bit higher. I don't want them at my hips. Um, that's not the best part of my body. And so I put them a little bit higher and I really like it again because I don't really use my pockets to be honest, but I want them on there because it looks, um, it, it looks, it just doesn't look right without pockets to me, a coat without pockets, but again, it's yours. All right, so those are the pockets. With the sleeves, because they automatically got larger, I did use a shoulder pad. In fact, I used a, a one inch shoulder pad. Um, and in here, you'll notice that this is the tie interfacing. We showed you how to do this. Very easy to do. Um, that sleeve is gonna be just absolutely beautiful going in on the other side. And what I did is I did a little leather trim. And that little leather trim, and then I used two leather buttons in the front. The leather buttons we have online, the leather trim we don't. That leather trim, you can pick it up at Leather Impact. It's sold by the yard and it's just something you insert. Very easy to do and you can see just really beautiful and really polished. I mean, it's stunning. It, it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so then what I wanna talk about is the belt. Not in the pattern, easy to make. What I did is I cut the width of this fabric is 60. So I took one width and I cut it five inches wide, folded it in half and then just top edge stitched the one side. So what that did is it made a, a belt. I, I did do the buttons for closure, but I love a belt. Again, just kind of flop it over and just to keep cuddly. The coat that Miss Markle had on was a belt, but if you go back in those pictures and look where she tied it, she tied it right in the middle on top of all the bulk. And what you don't want to do is tie it right in the middle on top of all of the bulk. You're just going to take it 
and go to the side where there's less bulk and you'll tie it right there at the side once that double breasted stops. So the double breasted is there, the knot is there and you're good to go, okay? All right, very simple to do. For those of you who want to make a different kind of coat, I'm gonna show you something. A little while ago, we had this, um, we had this uh, oval piece. And this is a circle. It had two slits in it. This was done out of a shear. I think we did this last summer. And when you put it on, and, I, and I'm well aware it doesn't match. <laughs> when you put it on, you kind of held this up, you put this down, and it formed a, a really beautiful little shawl. Okay, very pretty. All right, what we're gonna do now, what I did, is I've done this in a coat weight wool. Now again, this is, I don't know, this is really a wool, I'm not sure of the fabric content, but I'm gonna show you how to do this because it's just absolutely beautiful. And this is more work, this is really fast and easy, so you can decide, I, I did both. So I took my fabric, you'll need a yard and a half, you'll need 50 inches. I mean, obviously I started with two yards. And you fold it, and you fold it. So you're gonna put it in force. You're gonna see that's kind of right there where I cut out. So once you have it in force, now this is beautiful, it's reversible. Both sides are great, that's what you want. As long as you like both sides, that's what you want. Because this will fall as beautifully as this will fall. And then I'll show you some a lot of options that you have with doing it. So force is what it is. The yardage is in half this way. It's in half this way. So you can see I've got four layers here. One, two, three, four. You're going to measure up. That's your uh, 25 inches. And then just come here 25 inches. So 25 because it's in halves. It's 50 inches. But I, and you can make them all different widths. But it's um, 25 this way, 25 this way and then cut. When I cut, I'll generally cut here and start to cut there and here and start to cut there. And then I'll even fold it in force. I mean, uh, uh, fold it one more time and you can kind of complete that. All right, so there you have the base. You come in six inches and you cut up six inches and you're cutting your two armholes is what you're cutting right back here. All right, so it's that easy. The fun part really becomes is how I decide I want to finish it because there's so many options. So you can see what I've done is I'm, I'm, cutting, I'm covering this with a leather trim. This leather, whether it be in the piping, on the buttons, on the trim, it's just very rich looking. It's simply beautiful. So I really wanted to just kind of give you a heads up on how to do this. I have shown you how to do this before, but I'm gonna do, I did just a little section so you could see it. You're gonna cut your leather and I took, and, and one, Six, squ six square feet of leather, one skin, cut in strips, and I cut mine in one inch strips. We'll easily do this. We'll go all the way around. So you're gonna cut it wider than you need. I'm only turning this up three eighths. So what you can see is the front side of this, which is where I'm gonna sew, is narrow, and the back side is wider. So here what I want you to see is I sewed on this side, and you can see I sewed right on the edge there. But on the back side, you see how much wider it is. So people have looked at stuff I've worn that's got leather trim on it, and they'll say, how did you sew that? Like, how did you sew that good? I'm not that good. I just simply sew the one side, and then you cut off the back side. So because it's wider, you're just going to take your scissors, and the easiest way is to just slide your blade under there, and then just cut the section. And go slow so that you're not, you know, cutting anything underneath but you can see it's just going to cut away beautiful and you can cut away exactly where you want it to be so that it looks perfect on both sides even though it's clearly not it's very quick and easy to do this if you're not ready for the leather there's so many other options with a woven I wouldn't leave it raw because the raw edges it'll just fray it, it doesn't fray evenly or pretty but this selvage if you notice is really beautiful and you could cut the selvage and then sew it back on to be the edge of the garment. That would be absolutely beautiful. You can simply just turn it over and just stitch it and that will stop the raveling. So because of the beauty of having the dark side up and the light side, you know, either way you want to finish it would be really pretty. You could do a fold over elastic all the way on the edges. 
so many easy ideas that you could do. Again, with the leather, the reason I did it, and I'm going to show you this, is because I really wanted to just give it a kind of a pop of color. And that, that leather is just really rich. When you do choose the two sizes, you're going to want to put the darker side down so that when it folds over, what you're going to see is that the darker side is to the bottom and the lighter side generally is up because the remember that when we talk about focal point and all of those things when we talk about the lighter the focal point we know that the focal point we want the lighter color to be at the top so that that's where people look and you can see just what a fun little cape it is it's just just fun i wanted to reintroduce it to you we've done it but we've done it in shears we've done it in summery fabrics and it translates really beautifully to heavier fabrics and it's a really quick easy project if you have yard and a half of fabric it's a great gift great gift for the holidays um the other thing that i wanted to show you and just introduce to you is these furs because we have this particular fur in and it's stunning and again i've shown you how to do furs but you can easily make a fur coat that was spectacular and you can see there's even the faux furs which this is are very very pricey there's nothing different you do with them when you sew the backing is really beautiful the only thing I really want to show you on this piece is that you and again this is the piece we have on our site and you'll see that it has the the stripes you could do fun things with the stripes and the different colors it's just beautiful but when you cut it just don't cut it off at the bottom and I did a little sample here so you could see if you cut it straight you're gonna cut all these the, the length off when you do the bottom of the fur you actually don't even have to finish the bottom because the, the fuzz the hair whatever you want to call it is longer than the actual backing so you don't even have to finish the bottom you shouldn't finish the bottom of a fur coat the sleeves all that you leave it so you can see it become become a really simple project so when you put your scissors in to cut once you decide to cut go inside and just grab the backing and that's the only portion you're cutting don't cut through it's very easy to do it's just something to remember see as I pull that away you've still got the fur there so instead of cutting all the way through the hairs cover the part where you've cut only thing you've got to know about fur put it together right sides together push the fur out of the way you can make beautiful seaming it's fun it's easy to work with this becomes washable this is really so for our toys for tots drive which this is um, for all of you we want to wish you a wonderful holiday season make something fun for yourself for somebody else just not only can you save but you can make it all about you and you can get a lot of fun stuff so from silhouettes all of us behind the scenes in front of the scenes happy sewing from silhouette patterns have a wonderful holiday season bye for now